already at Loads for Life, you're bringing us a brand new cubic deck profile, and you might be wondering, well, gee, Loads here, you just did a cubic deck profile earlier this month, and you're right. But, however, I wanted to do one to kind of show off what the deck looked like before Dual Overload and what it's going to look like after, because after Dual Overload, the deck gets a lot of, uh extra power behind it thanks to two new cards. There is a third other card called Cubic Ascension that is just kind of okay. It's not particularly good for what Cubics want to do. It's not a bad card, but it's not well worth playing in the OTK variant of the deck in my opinion. That being said though, Cubic Dharma and Cubic Causality are both amazing cards and definitely worth uh, finding space in the deck to play. So. Without much further ado, let's get on with the deck profile. First and foremost, we got three of the boss monster, Crimson Nova, the Dark Cubic Lord. Crimson Nova is your main boss monster. He is your main win condition. You want to summon this guy as soon as possible in every single game. And if you can't get him out, then, well, generally speaking, you're screwed because this guy is your win condition. He is a level 10 who just needs to be able to be special summoned by revealing three other cubic cards with different names in your hand, and then you just plop them on the field. That's not once per turn either, so if you have multiples of them in your hand, you can reveal multiple cards at the same time and just keep summoning more copies of them. He's unaffected by all activated monster effects of monsters with less than or equal to 3,000 attack power. And if he kills a monster in battle, he can attack a second time. And, oh yeah, during the end phase as a hard once per turn, as the only hard once per turn effect on this card, during your turn, uh, during the end phase, you burn both players for 3,000 damage. This card is just an OTK machine, and it is absurd how easy it is to close out a game with him, and how difficult it is for certain decks to get over. Because some of the popular meta decks have a difficult time getting over him, but really the only option they have is Boral Sword or dropping something with Alistair, and even then there's ways around those two guys in this deck. So, yeah. <laughs> um, very, 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 very good card overall, and definitely a needed three, well, three of in the deck. Speaking of three of in the deck, we got Dooza, the Meteor Cure. The Meteor cubic vessel. This is your other like main dude. Uh, anytime he is summoned, you can send any cubic from your deck to the graveyard, and then during your first turn, if a monster is sent to your graveyard, uh, as a quick effect, you can increase his attack by 200 times the number of monsters of different names in your graveyard. The main thing is, is the send a graveyard effect on summon. That's not once per turn, and there are plenty of ways of triggering this thing multiple times in a duel, thanks to the various effects that the deck has to be able to special summon this guy over and over and over and over. Uh, and due to the fact that every single one of the spell and trap cards uh, that, while well, you play at least, uh, have graveyard effects that are often just as, if not better than their field effects, you play three of this guy because he is just that good. He's your main engine. The attack buff doesn't come up too often. It does come up every so often, but it's not crazy important. It is something to keep in mind though, especially if like you drop a hand trap on your opponent and then you are able to use dues as effective pump up his attack power and potentially uh, kill an opponent's monster during their turn. Next up we got three Vijam, the Cubic Seed. We still play three this guy because he's still, well, the only other really, really, really good name Cubic Monster. <laughs> Not to mention these spells and traps often rely on him, so having him as another name is really good. Not to mention Cubic Dharma um, actually makes it to where this guy's a bit better because you can actually use his on-field effect. Basically, he can't be destroyed in battle, and if he battles an opponent's monster, at the end of the damage step, you can put them in your back row as a face of continuous spell, and uh, the monster they battle gets a cubic counter on them. Monsters with cubic counters can't activate their effects, or rather they have their effects negated, is what I should say. I don't know why I keep saying they can't activate their effects, they just have them flat out negated. And then also monsters with uh, cubic counters cannot attack. And then while he's in the back row, you can special summon him, which is pretty cool. So you can keep reusing his effects. So he's a really good card overall, he's just not particularly great for the OTK strategy. There are a few times where you might have to set him and wait a turn, because honestly this deck does not have a good first turn most of the time, and that's the biggest issue with the archetype, is that they suck going first. <laughs> so, it does come up once in a blue moon, but also crashing into stuff with him in order to get the negate, and also, uh, he's mainly just uses fodder for the other spells and traps, which is pretty nice. 
Next up, I got three Summoner Monk. I've been kind of flip flopping between two and three of them. A friend of mine was kind of talk, trying to talk me into playing two, and heck, even possibly cutting him out entirely. Because if you draw him and you don't have a spell, then you're kind of screwed. But however, at the same time, you play so many spells in this deck that you don't really need to worry about that too much. I've never had that actually happen to me, so I digress. Um, that being said, everybody knows what Summoner Monk does. You pitch a spell, spell summon any monster from your deck that's level four, which is you know, pretty good overall. Next up, we got the hand traps. Uh, two Ash Blossom with Joy and Joy Spring. Uh, just, you know, just stop my opponent from searching. Uh, two Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, kind of just more disruption. Two Effect Filler, again, more disruption. If I had the money for uh, Infinite and Permanence, I'd probably go with that instead, or heck, even find room to fit in with these. Because the deck wants to go second and it's just fighting an uphill battle overall, you need to play as many hand traps as you can squeeze into this deck. And trust me when I say that the side deck is like most of these hand traps. So, <laughs> yeah, um, trying to squeeze in these guys as much as possible is a big sticking point for me, and I want to find ways to squeeze in even more because in all honesty they are that important for the deck to be able to keep up with your opponent. Next up I cut Endoria Doomvolt to one. Well actually no I've always had him at one but now he's the only uh, remaining cubic monster that I play other than Vijan, Duza, and Crimson Nova <coughs> because um, Gira Ghoul and Blade Garuda just aren't really worth playing that much, or at least I think it, no, it's Vulcan Dragon that I was playing. Um, because while yes, the Emperor line is nice and all, heck, both lines are honestly pretty cool, but however, they don't do much and they clog up your hand, but you, I still feel like I need to play one of them, um, because in all honesty, the deck needs more names, and I was not... Uh, keen on not playing as many names, so I wanted to keep the same number of names in the deck. So whenever I took out uh, Gira Ghoul and Vulcan Dragni, I for a uh, good old Dharma and Causality, I wanted to keep in uh, in Diora for that. There's also a simple fact that this thing has some very cheesy shenanigans you can do with it. Um, <laughs> you can summon him off of Unification of the Cubic Lords, and then he won't be able to be destroyed by battle or card effect that turn, but then during your turn, you can switch him into attack mode, slam him, slam him into an opponent's monster, and then uh, get the three special summons plus a search off of his own effect. Because if you guys don't know, when Indiora Doomvolt is sent to the graveyard by an opponent's card, whether it be destroyed by battle or card effect, you get to special summon three cubic monsters uh, from your graveyard and then you get to search out another cubic card. It's really good. He and Buster Gundel both do it, um, but between the two I decided to go with Endure because he also does the burn damage. When he is summoned by his own effect from the hand, he does 800 burn damage, which does come up in uh, certain circumstances. And between that and Buster Gundel's triple attack, I kind of just kind of leaned more towards the burn damage. Although the triple attack from Buster Gundel is also uh, pretty understandable some people would lean towards that more. Moving on, I got one gold gadget, one silver gadget. Still keeping those guys in for uh, more comboing with Duza and stuff. And then one Gen X ally Birdman. Honestly, I'm kind of tempted to cut out these three, but however, they have proved to be just too useful for combos and giving the deck more versatility and utility with Duza. And since Duza is your main man throughout the deck until you can get Crimson Nova on the field, these guys really do go hand in hand. The biggest thing with um, these guys in particular, especially with Silver and Gold Gadget, is that with them, you're able to make a Link play or an Xyz play uh, with Duza or themselves if you need to. And then with uh, Gen X Ally Birdman, you're able to generate so much advantage off of uh, just one Duza, because with Duza, you can normal summon him, send unification to the Cubic Lords, uh, re use Birdman effect, bounce the Duza back to hand, special summon Birdman, unification effect, banish it, special summon another Duza from deck, sending another unification of the Cubic Lords to Graveyard, and then you can make a synchro play, and if you're going first, you make Dawn Dragster, if you're going second, you make um, Black Rose Dragon, and then you get another special summon off of the freaking unification, because it doesn't miss timing, and it's just so, so, so stupid, and I love it, so uh, Birdman is very, very very uh, helpful in the deck. I only wish he was searchable. That's like my biggest issue with him in general. Moving on to the spells. I got Triple Cubic Wave. This card is, again, we still need as many names as possible and uh, we just 
the spells are so good. So Cubic Wave, first and foremost, whenever it's just activated from your hand, you target one Cubic Monster you control, one monster your opponent controls, double your monster's attack power, and half your opponent's monster's attack. This is not once per turn. If you have triple Cubic Wave in hand and you have a Crimson Nova sitting on field, you can potentially have a, what, 12,000 attack power Cubic Crimson Nova. That is really, really stupid. Actually, wait, no, he'd be even, he'd be 24,000, right? Because 3,000 doubled once, 6,000, 6,000 doubled uh, once is 12,000 and double that to 24. So yeah, that is theoretical. It's not likely, but however, the big thing is that a doubling a Crimson Nova to 6K is usually more than enough to, well, finish off your opponent. Then this thing also has a great graveyard effect where you can banish it from your graveyard along with any number of cubic monsters from your graveyard to put cubic counters on your opponent's monsters equal to the number of cubic monsters you banished. So you can banish it and like two cubic monsters to put two cubic counters on stuff. And remember, creatures with cubic counters have their effects negated and also cannot attack. So this just really is just another really good card with Duza and also with Crimson Nova. It's just such an amazing uh, spell card overall. Then we got Triple Cubic Wave, I mean, Karma. Karma is your main searcher. While it's in the graveyard, you can banish it to search out any cubic monster from your deck to your hand. And I will be 100% honest, that's the main effect and what this third card is used for. Um, it also has uh, two other effects. Basically, if you summon a V-Jom of up 30 effect of a cubic monster during your opponent's turn, you can send it to the graveyard while it's on the field to half your opponent's life points. This, I've only ever used it once when I was playing one of the more traditional builds, and this is the OTK build, so it's never happened. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, whenever you do activate it from your hand, you can target a cubic monster you control, send V-Joms from your hand, field, or uh, deck to the graveyard, um, as many as possible, and then increase that monster's attack power by 800 for every guy sent. So, theoretically, that's a max of 2400 attack, and that does happen quite a bit to where you can target Crimson Nova with this and increase Crimson Nova's attack power to 5400, and I can see even more shenanigans, uh, funnier, I should say, if you also have a wave in hand to, well, double that 5400 into a 1080. Uh, so, it's pretty stupid. It's a really good card overall, especially comboed with wave, but you're mainly using it for its grave effect to search. Speaking of more stuff, we got Triple Cubic Dharma. Dharma is an, a fantastic support piece for cubics. Basically, once per turn, you can send one cubic card from your hand to the graveyard to draw one card. If it's in your graveyard, you can banish it from your graveyard to target a cubic monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand, and then while it's on the field, you take no damage from battles involving cubics. This is an amazing support card for cubics. Not only does it let you discard a cubic monster or cubic spell or trap card, more importantly, um, to be able to then use that cubic spell or trap, it's graveyard effect, like for instance, discarding a, wave, a karma or a wave to draw a card and then also get their graveyard effects. It's flat out fantastic with that. Not to mention you take no battle damage from battles involving your cubics, which means you can slam your Fijam into whatever your opponent has, get a cubic counter on it, negate its effects, and just have a wonderful little profit there going on. Um, and then of course it's graveyard effect to recur a, gra a a cubic from your graveyard. This is one of the biggest, most important parts of this card because with it, you're able to recur Crimson Nova if he does die, and he probably will, especially since there's ways around him, like through Boral Sword, um, Kaiju, such and such. So, really good card overall. Three fantastic effects for cubics and what they want to do. Beautiful artwork, too. It's just, I love it. It's also draw card, it's also draw support for the archetype, which is something that the deck desperately needed. Uh, moving on, I got two Pot of Desires. This card is a wonderful uh, thing for the deck. I don't know if I'd play Pot of Extravagance over this if I had the money because Extravagance locks you out of doing more draws and there's so many ways to get draws out of this deck without needing Extravagance, but two Pot of Desires is great. You play so many three ofs, you don't really need to worry about it. I do try to generally search out at least one Crimson Nova before I activate it because I, I trust me when I say winning without Crimson Nova is not easy. <laughs> uh, two Fool's Bureau of Goods. I've kind of been flip-flopping between playing two and three of it, but I got so many ways to get my guys in my graveyard uh, that I don't really need to worry about that too much. You know, just getting your spells and traps to the graveyard is very, very important. Speaking of your traps, first and foremost, I play triple uh, Unification of the Cubic Lords. Unification is an 
fantastic card and really what makes the deck work until you can get Crimson Nova on board. This card, uh, its primary effect while it's in a graveyard is if a, sorry, when, if I remember right, it is a, a if, yeah it is if, <laughs> gotta, gotta be very, 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 very specific on it. If a cubic monster leaves the field in any way whatsoever, you can banish unification from your graveyard just special summon any level four or lower cubic monster from your deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. It is, and on top of that, it cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects until the end of the turn. So you can summon Dooza, get his effect to send another one of these guys to the graveyard, and then like link it off, sync it off, uh, fusion it off, whatever. It doesn't matter. Whatever happens to be on the field, whenever a cubic leaves, it's just does more stuff and gets more stuff on field and it's wonderful. It's supposed to kind of make the uh, effects of summoning the main deck uh, cubics a bit easier, but that, that's irrelevant when you can just spam Dooza and get more stuff in a graveyard. On that note, this card also is a fusion trap card. It's just fusion summon a cubic monster um, by activating it whenever it's set. The only issue with that is that there's only one cubic fusion monster, and generally speaking, you don't really get a chance to summon uh, the fusion monster. I'll talk about more. I'll talk about him more in a minute because he is a really good boss monster. Except it just doesn't come up that in enough to really warrant summoning him too often. But I digress. So it is also a fusion uh, trap card. Hopefully one day cu uh, Cubix will get more fusion monsters, but I digress. Then I also got two causality. This card I'm flip-flopping between playing two and three of, and I can't decide. So, <laughs> so right now I'm maining two and siding a third. Because what this card is, is it is an amazing support card when you're going first. And it's a really good card whenever you're going second. So basically what this does is... Whenever you activate it, uh, just on the field, you get to put cubic counters on your opponent's monsters equal to the number of cubic monsters you control. That is really good right off the bat because, uh, again, cubic mo monsters with cubic counters have their effects negated and they can't attack. So, oh, your opponent makes a big scary mechaba. Okay, activate this, put a counter on it. It can't do anything. And of course, you're going to want to bait out that mechaba first, but I digress. So, <clears throat> or like, oh, your opponent summons Stratus, chain this, put a counter on it. Its effect is negated. So it's really, really good for that right there, but also if it's in your graveyard, you can banish it, target a cubic monster you control. If it kills a monster in battle this turn, your opponent takes damage equal to its attack power. <laughs> Just making it that much easier to get the OTK, and I love it. This card is flat out amazing for the deck. It makes going first not as bad if you can get it. Th that's my only real issue with the deck right now, other than the fact that it needs more good main deck monsters, is the fact that you have no way of searching your spells and trap cards. So you gotta like max out on them if you really really want to see it and because I can't decide if I want to see this going first all the time especially considering that this deck never wants to go first so you're going to want to go second most of the time and it's not as good going second because you're mainly using it for its graveyard effect going second um, but however going first and you get that primary effect where you flip it over and get to negate stuff that's really 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 good so that's why I'm maining two siding one so yeah <laughs> On to the extra deck, which hasn't really changed much um, since I talked about it in the previous deck profile. I'll be 100% honest, it hasn't changed like at all. First and foremost, one Crimson Nova, the Dark Cubic, sorry, one Crimson Nova Trinity, uh, Crimson Nova Trinity, the Dark Cubic Lord. This is the fusion monster that Cubics currently have. I really hope we get more than just him eventually because uh, he's a good monster, but he, you just don't need him that much because uh, in order to summon him, you need three Crimson Nova. And again, generally speaking, one Crimson Nova is enough to win you the game most of the time. So using all three in your deck to make one big fusion monster just isn't really warranted most of the time, but I digress. So what do you get for fusing three of these guys into one dude? You get a 4,500 beater with 3k defense, not that that matters, who is unaffected by all card effects. Whenever he attacks, he has your opponent's life points. If he kills a monster by battle, he can attack a second time. <laughs> and also, any effect damage you take, your opponent takes as well. So yeah, you get a towers that can attack twice, halves your opponent's life points whenever he does attack, and forces your opponent to take any burn that you take as well. This thing is mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's also really, really mean if you can get them out along with a Crimson Nova, uh, which is doable now thanks to Karma. I mean, sorry, Dharma, uh, where you can use Dharma Effect in Graveyard to add back one of your Crimson Novas after Fusion Summoning uh, 
uh, Crimson Nova Trinity, because what that does is then during the end phase, your opponent takes 6,000 damage, because they take any effect damage you do. <laughs> so, oh, hey, I have Crimson Nova out, end phase, I take 3k, you take 3k. Oh, Crimson Nova Trinity, you take another 3k. <laughs> so, that that's not enough burn damage, though, so I don't know. It's a really good card overall, just you don't get to summon it too often. Um, I have played builds that are focused on fusion summoning him in the past, and I'm going considering doing another turbo build in the future. So if you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments. Because it's not hard to turbo them out at all, really. Uh, just this build's not focused on it. Now for the synchros, you got one Black Rose Dragon, which is who you synchro for if you're going second. Uh, one Dog Dragster, who you synchro for if you're going first. Unless your opponent's like full of like, uh, like in regards to going second. If your opponent has a crap ton of back row, Dawn Dragster might be better sometimes, but for the most part, you're making black rows going second. So, um, yeah, for the most part, going first, going second. Obviously, sometimes you're going to make Dawn Dragster going second, but you're mainly making him going first so you can negate stuff. Uh, one Gravity Controller. Honestly, once we get the Master Rule revisions, I'm going to drop him because he's not useful after that, but right now he's pretty useful for being basically an extra deck Grand Mole. Um, one Nightmare Service for popping, one Nightmare Phoenix for popping, one Nightmare Unicorn for more popping. I'm going to be 100% honest, these guys are just not really, like, you just don't go into the extract too much. But you can Link Climb super easy, because thanks to Unification, you can Link Climb all the way up into a Link 4 pretty easy with the Nightmares and stuff. Uh, speaking of Link 4, one Mech Knight Crusadia Avermax, because, hey, he's cool. Same thing with Boral Sword. Um, the main extract monster I make is number 60, uh, Daguerreus, the, uh, Timeless, who you mainly just use for his draw effects so you can get more draw power. Typically speaking, if you're going first, what I will do is I will, uh, use Summoner Monk or Gold Gadget if possible or Silver Gadget, whichever one I open along with Dooza to summon out, uh, Dooza, get a dude in Graveyard, usually like Karma if I can make him, um, so then I can search out Crimson Nova. Then I'll make him draw two, discard one, and then just set up for next turn and make Gravity Controller to sit on. So that's usually the thing. Um, and then also one Abyss Dweller so I can go first and not get killed most of the time. Uh, one uh, that gets Slime Roll to recycle stuff. Uh, one Tornado Dragon to pop stuff. One Gustav Max because uh, sometimes just burning for an extra 2k is all you need and you don't want to... I'll be honest, Crimson Nova's 3k burn damage to you and your opponent can be very, uh, very, very double-edged swordy. So you do not want to leave Crimson Nova out on the field for too long because you can kill yourself with it. And then one um, Super Dreadnought Real Canning's uh, Dora, basically Dora the Explorer here. So that is Cubix. Uh, I love this deck so much. And if I had locals going on right now, I would be playing these guys in my locals right now. But unfortunately due to the virus running around that I can't name because this, uh, heck, just for saying the V word, I'm probably gonna get buried on freaking YouTube. Um, I, I can't go and play Yu-Gi-Oh! IRL. <laughs> I did get a lot of testing with this build against a friend of mine who plays uh, both Salmon Great and also uh, Invoked Shadol, so I got a lot of testing against that. And it, it does pretty good against those, so, uh, to be honest, this deck is a lot of fun. If Konami ever gives this deck more support, this is one of those archetypes that's going to go from being just okay to being like flat out amazing. So do keep your guys' eyes on Cubix. Hopefully one day we'll get some more support. Who knows? What do you guys think of this build? What do you think can be tweaked around, uh, changed around? What would you guys' recommendations, ideas, and concerns be? Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. And see you all later. Peace out. Thank you all for watching the video. Have a great day. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. Rate, comment, and subscribe. And see you all later.